days. Where'd you go? Uh, we're, we're shopping for a town. We're shopping for you. Were, you but you're from San Francisco or Oakland, right? Maryland. From where? Maryland. Maryland. <laughs> close. Close enough. <laughs> Doing a great job. Who's we? What do you mean you we? Do, do you speak in the we? Are you one of those fucking poets? <laughs> sound, sound is a reach. What? Oh, I'm not. I was making a joke. You really do talk like that? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. All right. Uh, so this gentleman uh, has come through a number of times, uh, always with a different pseudonym, a different nom de plume, if you will. Um, he's coming in, and uh, tonight we'll be operating under the influence. Under the influence. I'm under the influence, clearly. And I am. The show is brought to you by Malort. Um, if you haven't had one yet, get on it. Get on it. Uh, but this gentleman will be here tonight. Uh, we'll be doing a set for you. Put your hands together and welcome up to the stage, Warhol Kaufman, everybody. Warhol Kaufman. Hey guys. Hey. How y'all doing? Rhetorical. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so I did. I used to live in the Bay. I lived in Oakland for a while. That was interesting. Like um, they found a human head in the recycling plant two blocks from our house, which is messed up because that's compostable. <laughs> I tried to move to Portland, and I got to Portland and I found out I had a six cents in my bank account. Um, and I did my first show in Portland. No one told me to break a leg, but I did anyway. Yeah, then uh, the host criticized my performance, insult to injury. That was nice. <laughs> Uh, but I met my wife, and my wife is so great. I really love her so much, you know? Like, she really gets more beautiful every day. And had I known that, I would have waited <laughs> to marry her. But we got married. Um, when I met her, I was homeless. And she was like, I want you to stop sleeping around. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'll sleep here now. And I showed up with all my stuff. Uh, that was nice. And then we got married at a rest stop. So for our first anniversary, we had urinal cake. Stop it. I know, it's just horrible. Um, so I just heard I was a poet, so I guess I should read some poetic type business. Yeah, what's happening? Here we go. There's one of those. Uh, how about that one? Yes. Success. So I, I tried to write an epic one time. I just started at random. If you're reading this, you probably think it's fiction. Once upon a time, people wanted writing, bought and paid for. This is before we wrote the lie of reality, before politicians all looked the same like pretty boy actors, sound bites, clothing specialists, and camera makeup still. We got pictures of the Holocaust, if you want to see it. Pictures of enslavement. Scar-crossed terrain in the dark-eyed indigenous, neither American nor Indian. Some guy told me he existed in his own bubble on a pedestal untouched by sacrifice. As if that weren't the American dream. Wrapped up in the unread, unstarched pages of our constitutional manifesto. I always say we when referring to the imperial enslavement of my people. Oh, I sound crazy now. I always employ the first person plural when I remember how many ways I've benefited from the rape and murder of my people. I shit inside and outside neighborly San Francisco's plastic bag, their dog shit to throw in garbage bins as the hungry multitude descend on dumpsters and. Um, I like San Francisco, it's really cool actually. I like, like you can find whatever you're looking for on the street, especially if you're looking for human beings. 
The hungry multitudes descend on dumpsters and trash troves to dig out a little food till they can sleep. A dream burned out like a once lit cigarette. A dream color copied and repackaged in a newer, cleaner carton. A dream whitewashed and resold without the image of the broke back millions who planted someone else's crops in their soil of imagination, tilled, reaped, and harvested. A dream till someone wrapped up and sold a stranger's dream back to them and bought their land up at the millions and planted the story so deep it could never be told. Seven. The Phantom Limb Parade. The Phantom Limb Parade of human frailty out my window is unceasing. Artists on couches. Freelance street journalism, corner vendors seeking investment. Hookers on the ride outside the accordion shop, according to Carla. This gets really intense. I like telling jokes. Um, <laughs> how come there's so many German shepherds and so few Jew shepherds? <laughs> Who invented the term spick and span, white people? Um, so I once, I once did a show, I was scheduled to do a show with the good Asian drivers, they were late, they got in a car accident, that's true, that happened. It's just a story, it happened. Uh, the other day, pardon you, pardon me for the view, I apologize. All right, the other day, um, I saw these two Asian girls running and I was like, what is it, a sale on noodles? And there was. <laughs> also true. Um, let's do some other stuff. Here we go. Eight. Fury of sound. He wrenched the needle from the gramophone. Edward Gorey. I got the tattoo. All right. Anybody want to brag? The most dangerous radicals I know are in Toronto. How long has sex been a weapon? We no longer fear how far we've come. Our largest projects remain too small to hold us. What are the odds? It was all a dream, as the man said. This week, our visitor merely added an element of much unappreciated chaos. My publisher told me to write more, and my father told me I don't know how good I actually am at what I do. Is it time for the stories? Dazzle jazz in Denver, Colorado. This is fucking poetry! The broken glass, canceled event at a classy bar. Mike Stan swung at that shiny car's rear window in drunk driving Atlanta. Wrecking Mike's on stage with the usual superstars. Shadowed by fame, all the lights spot and line, dim and red. Smoke filled chamber, blessed in tinted glass. Somebody asked where I got the SWAT helmet from. For the first time in my life, I'm not lonely. I'm surrounded by artists, which I've heard my friends dream about for years. If some of us create for other artists, others for the rich, and many channel their work through crowds and across multitudes, where are we in this landscape of fanatical craftism? Gear shifts, pixies, and velocipedes. We ride places and eventually arrive somewhere, right? How long till you get discovered? I'm famous online. How long after being in someone's house do you begin to snoop? How long did I keep praying after my belief quit? Eyes closed, looking for God on the floor. When the policeman told me a story of doing blow off a yacht, I was a little unclear. Want to know what I wish for? She would talk about film. Yeah, I've seen Scarface. Yeah, yeah, that was bad. Murdering a guy with a chainsaw, some real shit. Pulp Fiction, get medieval. Think about the Dark Ages, just prima noctis, king's privilege, forget it. Dead language, it's rare. But humans spontaneously combust, sometimes people catch fire inexplicably. Heat preceded by sound, light hawk, send your meme out like a rocket ship. We believe ideas become eternal. One time in the Tenderloin, I was with my wife on the street. I kissed my wife, and this woman came up and she was like, Excuse me, if I can't have sex or kiss, with my johns in the bushes, you can't kiss or have sex on the corner. And I just thought that was unfair. Mm -hmm. You guys, understatement is absolutely the most incredible, powerful, wonderful, exquisite, cathartic style of literary expression. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> so, I had to go on tour because my wife had never been to Waffle House. <laughs> And um, as we were like preparing to leave, ants just like took over. They just took our sh over. It was crazy. And so we left and it like, it's kind of messy, I guess, at the house, but like the mice will clean it up, so don't worry about it, it's fine. 
You guys, I just feel like I can tell you anything. This is so sweet. You want to hear um, the longest piece of fiction I ever wrote? No. no. Well, there's no time for that, obviously. No, I'll just read you a piece of it. Times he was tempted to love his job. When he could see someone needed letting go, available resources crying for repossession and known in the way when a woman crossed his path who wanted something and he could give it when somebody had been taken advantage of, got put to rights. Other times, helping powerful people, learning photography and manipulation, finding ways to become invisible, memorable, forgotten when necessary, organizing how to defend himself. McCoy avoided habits. He lived through instinct and by working constantly. He wouldn't know how to take a day off. Once he found his work, nothing else interested him. No one could intervene. His hunger consumed his attention, friendships, waking and sleeping hours. He fed everything to his beast of the obsession, acquiring tools and clothing, surroundings, allowing himself to remain ignored. McCoy technically did not exist at all. In his work, he collected stories. Afterwards, trying to forget, he traveled or drank a path of blood and broken bones that led to opiates, questionable decisions. He preferred to keep his world ordered. Moderation functioned as a safeguard. So I saw a sign that said $30 facials, and I just thought there'd be more than that. I saw another sign that said psychotherapist. Is that really the kind of therapist you want? <laughs> No. This, uh, this isn't a joke, but a couple days ago, I was in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. And I was crossing the street, I was like, look at that, a green light. Take that as my cue. Walk across the street. And this guy was trying to take a right turn, and he got mad at me for walking. So he tried to hit me with his car, and he missed by like three inches, so I turned, and I spat at his car because that's how I say, I wish I could hurt that car, but yet I am merely mortal. So I spat at the car, but he had rolled down his window to yell at me, spat right in his face. So now he's driving away and like wiping his eyes. That happened. Um, a couple days before that, I went into a bar and my dog uh, doesn't drink, so she stayed outside. We <laughs> leased her up outside and then, you know, Six minutes passed, like, oh, nice to meet you. Better check on my dog. I went back outside. And this guy is like, like he gets in my face and he's like screaming. He's like, you're a piece of shit. What, in what kind of world is this okay? And he's just like screaming at me and he like grabs me and puts his hands on me. And like my wife comes out and calls her a bitch. He shoves like a random woman. That shit's crazy. Is that crazy? I thought that was crazy. I don't have a punchline for that. <laughs> That shit was crazy, I just like to share. People say I should tell more stories because a lot of weird stuff happens to me, like, I'm a handful, you know? I'm allowed to take, like, I think I should give my wife a break. So I'm gonna start sleeping with other people. Holla. That's nice. I wonder what to do. I have some poems in here. Um, I have one I wrote for Laura Yes Yes. Don't tell her. I'd like to read that. It's called A Cemetery in Baltimore. Would you guys like to hear that? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. No, I can't find it. I found this one instead. <laughs> Poem for the love of my life in Katsumi. You must be an adult to enter this poem. Will you enter? I finally met a girl that I don't want to rape. Don't call it progress. Love is tired of visiting these lips. This woman dragged my spine out to New Zealand. I'm left shivering, dick drool on her mattress as five men fucking fail. Somehow they fail, these five men. It's called a gangbang. Pornography is rape. If you can't tell, you need to sign up online for www. Give us your credit card so you can pay attention while they shove and tear like mosh pit balls, orangutans. They can't degrade Katsumi. Have you ever met Katsumi? Me neither. She's the anal queen, takes it like a pro. See, porn is a crowded closet without space for hesitation. It's a contract. They don't leave a line for maybe. 
Katsumi's a professional. These women sign away their right to just say no, even the ones who haven't been kidnapped in traffic. No means no paycheck. And Katsumi is so graceful, she stays classy through a gang rape, but I'm not in love with her. No, 